the film by William Raban, as you know, is called Time and the Wave. When I hear the word time, I think of postmodernism. When I hear the word wave, I think of feminism. Postmodernism told us that time is abolished and we live in a, perpetual, in a perpetual present where choices matter little and anything goes. Feminism supposedly appears in waves and it refuses to recognize us as carrying out a transgenerational struggle. And yet, postmodernism's time has now gone. Time has started. And indeed, we are running out of it where the protection of our home called Earth is concerned. We measure our remaining time in decades marked by temperature rise, and 11,000 scientists warn us of untold human suffering as a future. The future finally exists and is predicted to be a holocaust. And yet, Feminism that comes in waves appears as far from meeting its goals as ever. Feminism is stuck in a world of horrible statistics. Women are poor, uneducated, raped and killed and found guilty by courts when they defend themselves. They do unpaid work that, if paid, it would break economies. They do work which is paid so little that it does not break economies. And above all, imperialism guarantees that women exploit hideously other women through their participation in the value transfer from the global south to the global north. How then postmodernism and feminism in their contradictions help me understand a film that sees time as the substance where the brutality of reactionary imperialist privilege is camouflaged as nostalgia and state history. And the sacrifice is required for resistance to this status quo. Both exist. Am I supposed to think that what is presented as stasis actually moves, and what is presented as movement necessarily entails stasis? Do social movements move, or are they held still by the structures that float down the river? and get state funerals. And what do feminists think of the Queen and of Thatcher? And what do those who believe that postmodernism has been liberating with its irony? What do these people think about the eclipse of irony in Occupy? Can these questions be answered? I doubt it. Feminists are divided on Thatcher, despite the fact that the gender pay gap got worse under her government, and don't seem to pay much attention to the fact that women also sustain the monarchy, despite the fact that a feminist called Silvia Federici has effectively explained capitalism as the pact between the aristocracy and the bourgeoisie against the movement of peasants towards communism a pact that both preserves the queens of the world and that required the torture and death of thousands of women as witches. As for the defenders of postmodernism's destabilization of the sign and the decentering of the subject, some of them defenders were feminists back in the 80s, suffice to look at how non destabilized the flow of science down River Thames is in the 21st century, and to think of all the dissenter subjects that became also displaced by the Iron Lady, thanks to the rise in house prices, interest rates, repossessions, poverty, and inequality. And to conclude, although I was asked to provide provocations, I haven't provided a single one, as these are my actual views. And if they seem provocative, um, well, um, I would say that um, they are based on my political experience, my political readings, my political collectivities. And I'm very ready 
to defend them in discussion and any other way, of course, that might be needed. In the future, that will be a Holocaust. So, thank you.